Hi, my name is Rustin Morse, and I'm here with four leaders from Nationwide Children's Hospital. And we're excited to provide you some news about the COVID vaccine and give you everything you'll need to know to prepare for getting the COVID vaccine here at Nationwide Children's Hospital. And we've been getting a lot of questions from staff. And we see people getting the COVID vaccine on the news from various healthcare uh, organizations. Chet, are we ready to give the vaccine today to our staff? We will be ready to give the vaccine on the day that we receive it. We are hoping to receive the vaccine on or about December 22nd. We think we're going to get the Moderna vaccine. And uh, when we receive the vaccine, we will immediately commence with vaccine clinics. So, Matt, what are the differences between the two vaccines? And should we be waiting for one or the other? So the two vaccines, the, uh, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, they, they, work, they both work in very similar ways. Functionally, they, they, they are the, the, the same vaccine. They have very similar safety profiles that, with the data released to the FDA. Uh, they have very similar vaccine efficacy, ex extraordinarily high, 95 and 94 uh, percent. I, I don't think that really there's any advantage that, that we know of, at least at this time, to get one vaccine over another. Uh, really, it's the, the, the vaccine that you can get first would be the vaccine to get. Becky, these vaccines, they came quickly, not quick enough, not soon enough. But how do we know they're safe? Yeah, I think that's the big question on everyone's mind, right? Um, I think because these vaccines were developed in a relatively short time frame, there's a perception that maybe they were rushed or corners were cut. And I want to start by saying that's absolutely not true. Um, these vaccines went through the same rigorous steps and regulatory processes as all other vaccines. And the fact that we have two effective vaccines in less than a year since the pandemic started is really a testament to where we are with science and technology and not at all an indication that any corners were cut or steps were skipped. I think it's also important to remember that these vaccines will continue to be studied for months and years to come as we roll them out to the entire population. And so we'll be able to continue to ensure that they are safe for um, all people. Thank you, Becky. So how are we prioritizing who's getting the vaccine? Boy, that's the million dollar question that everybody is asking right now. Um, <clears throat> the Nationwide Children's Hospital vaccine team, um, it's a multidisciplinary team um, that had uh, representatives from hospital leadership, from clinical operations, from pharmacy, from epidemiology, as well as the ethics team um, to look at um, how do we create um, um, a plan for how we're going to distribute this very precious but somewhat scarce and limited resource. So we um, are following the CDC guidelines for how to triage and tier um, our approach to distribution and uh, vaccination. It's also mirroring the Central Ohio hospitals as well. So we're all following that, that same protocol. It's very much based on risk. The risk of that employee um, to being exposed um, to the virus. So think about our frontline uh, providers who are um, potentially in contact with the virus on a daily basis. The second risk would be the risk to the organization if that role or function um, we're not able to be provided um, because we would lose that person um, because they were not vaccinated. So that's a second risk. And then the third risk that we looked at is the, the risk for the severity of the disease based on comorbid conditions or other things that we've identified that place a person at higher risk of higher severity of that illness. So given all of that, then we created those tiers and a process that chat that Chet just outlined for how you can sign up. And how will we know, Chet, when it's time to get the vaccine and how will we sign up for it? Yeah, so um, you'll receive an email from ReadySet that will um, alert you that um, your time has come and you're able to schedule to receive that vaccine. So you can go ahead and click on the link in the email and that will take you uh, to the scheduling um, portal where you'll be able to select a date and time. And uh, no worries if you click on that link um, and you go to schedule and all the time slots are currently taken, just check back every couple of days as additional uh, days will be opened as we receive more vaccine and uh, schedule those clinics out. Excellent, thank you. Leanne, are there any side effects? Like most vaccines, there are some side effects. Um, and like uh, many of the, the flu vaccines that we have given, the side effects to, to the COVID-19 vaccine are um, generally mild. So think um, 
soreness at injection site, um, potentially mild fever, body aches, um, and those typically happen um, at the 24 to 36 hour mark. Becky, you are my go-to safety person. <laughs> Is the vaccine safe for pregnant women? So these vaccines have not yet been studied in pregnant women. However, based on previous experience with other vaccines given during pregnancy and what we know about how this vaccine works, we have no reason to believe that it wouldn't be safe during pregnancy. However, that being said, I think it's really a personal decision that a pregnant woman must make in conjunction with her OB and after assessing her individual risk factors. Excellent. What about lactating women? There should be no, um, no problem with the vaccine during lactation. Thank you. So once vaccinated, Matt, done with the masks? The, the, the masks go on for a while. What we don't know at this time is that if you receive the vaccine, are, are you still possible, possible to get an asymptomatic infection and can you spread it to others, to other loved ones? Uh, at this time, until more data become available, it's uh, regardless of whether or not you've received the vaccine, one dose, two dose, zero doses, uh, you're, you're following all the same precautions, social distancing, masking, uh, avoiding large crowds, all, this, all the things you would be doing regardless of the vaccine. Leanne, are we making this vaccine mandatory? So the simple answer is not at this time. Um, while we, we hope um, and we encourage everyone to get the vaccine um, and uh, a lot of time and energy has been spent to, to make sure that we can get it to you, but we don't at this time because of the, the relatively new um, and early state of the vaccine, um, we're not going to make it mandatory. Thank you. I want to thank the four of you for joining me today, and I just have one final question. I'm personally going to be getting the vaccine. I want to know, are you getting the vaccine, Chet? Yeah. Uh, when I get that email, I look forward to signing up and, and uh, getting my vaccine. Becky? I can't sign up fast enough. Same here. Yes, when, when I get the email, we've spent a lot of time over the last several weeks looking through hundreds of pages on, on the FDA website. This vaccine works. This vaccine is safe. I, I'm, I'm certainly getting it, and I'm recommending my, my loved ones get it as well. Leanne? Absolutely, and while I'm not doing frontline patient care, so I'm therefore somewhat farther at the back of the line, um, I will absolutely be signing up as soon as that email comes. We're excited to move forward with this. If people have continued questions, we welcome them to go to Anchor. And once again, we thank you for your commitment to safety and for choosing to get this vaccine.